talking NASCAR on Prime Sports Network for this Tuesday, our last Tuesday of June 2024. CJ Rudun, of course, from RotoWire joining yours truly, Greg DePama, here as we take a look at the. Now, is this the Alley 400 or the Ally 400? Ally. Ally. Okay. And what is there Ally? Is it a Ally uh, record is a store? They're, they're a financial firm. I think they're a bank, um, basically, uh, a financial company. So the logo is basically only to represent Nashville. Yeah. They got a little. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> All right. So interesting. So they must be pretty, I guess, what? Are they stationed in Nashville? Is that like the deal? It must be. I'm not sure where Ally is stationed, to be quite honest with you. They are more prominent in the South. Um, but I'm not sure exactly where their headquarters is. Ally 400 at Nashville Super Speedway. Okay. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's not even 1.5 miles, and it's a uh, yeah, it's a super speedway. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, whatever you whatever you say. An ally for for those of you keeping score is actually based in Detroit, Michigan. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, there is the you know it's. There's there's some Motown going on there, so it's a stretch. It's a stretch. But... I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm reaching here. All right. So anyway, we're gonna preview the Ally 400, which is only race number four at the Nashville Super Speedway racetrack. So we're gonna be doing that, uh, and uh, we're also gonna talk a little bit of F1 later, as the boys are in Austria. So that's coming up a little bit later on here on the show. Keep in mind, of course, uh, if you do not see the F1 report on this video, uh, check out when we post it on the site. And that will be posted over on our Motorsports channel, uh, which, of course, is Mystery Caution. So please subscribe there. You'll see the links in the description area for that. Um, we'll also, of course, I'll be back uh, over the weekend uh, to preview qualifying, or actually to recap qualifying and practice for the Alive 400. Uh, on Saturday and couldn't do it last week. Last week was the first time. I mean, I tried to think of some way to do it. I was like, I was, should I do this? I mean, I'm not sure how this would work, but I, I just, I it made no sense to do a, a, a post qualifying practice deal because they had it shut out. I, this is the first time, right? This year that they didn't have a either session. I'm trying to think back. Um, I'm not sure if it's the first time. Um, but, I know uh, it was since I've been doing the videos, <clears throat> but well, I, I I missed the first month or so. So, and they have that unusual system. Uh, it's not so easy anymore. It used to be okay, whoever's whatever the point standings are, that's how you're lining up, and now they right. have a the metrics. Know, yeah, sort of like an all-star race. Yeah. Uh, deal where they come up with a whole bunch of different I, I don't I mean I don't know how you feel about it but um, that's the way that it is and it was very difficult to handicap the race at that point um, yet it, it Christopher Bell who was clearly as we said last week on the show clearly deserved to be the favorite uh, he was without a doubt he means the man uh, at New Hampshire uh I just wonder, though, I mean, whether or not Christopher Bell actually wins the race without the delay. What do you think? Yeah. Um, I think he had a strong enough car either way. Um, I, I was impressed when it got wet that he was able to jump out as front uh, out as quickly into the front as he did. And he was one of the ones that went really high really early. Um, he was quick throughout the day. You know, Reddick worked his way up there. Um, so it's a great question. Um, you know that people were timing their strategy and timing their stops, you know, predicting that the rain was going to come and then hoping that the amount of rain was going to wipe it. Um, it didn't end up wiping it. So, you know, I, I think in, at the end of the day, I think the right car won. I think either way, if it would have stayed green, I think the or, or stayed dry, I should say. I would think that the 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 strategies and the timing of the pits would have been a little bit different, and I still think Bell probably would have come out on top by the thing by the time everything washed out. Either way, uh, because he's been so dominant there, 
you and, and like you said, he had a good car. It's one of those things where you're like, well, he's just next year when we talk about the race, it's Christopher Bell. I mean, I don't know what else you could say. Uh, I, yeah. uh, though, I would have still liked to have seen. It, I would have liked to have seen a lo- now. It was impossible the way this was going at the end with the, with the new tire with the with the with, with the way the track was and 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 racing on the, the those tires and everybody. I mean, the, the whole end of the race was just weird. How it, it was like one race and then it became a second race. Cars were all yep. split out all over the place, all over the track, and but I really thought think that if there would have been like a thirty. 40 lap green flag run I really think Ryan Blaney would have had a chance to catch Christopher Bell and I, I would, that's what I would have liked to have seen what would have happened then because Blaney just had a much better car in the long run he get, we'd get off to slow starts and then he'd start coming on and he just never had that opportunity because they kept you know, we kept going to a caution every 10 laps uh, until of course, finally McDowell uh, wrecks him. So, yeah, that's true. Um, I wasn't really thinking about that, but then also McDowell was, you know, in in position there because of you know all the the wildness at the end. I I, I thought it was very cool, and now I think we should do this for every trip to to Nashville and, and perhaps like um, Gateway and, and some of the other speed speedways that are out there that we're not entirely great fans of. I think we should purposefully wet them down <laughs> and wet them down like randomly every like 50 to 75 laps, like turn on the sprinklers, have it get soaked again, just to spice up the racing. I mean, you had seven different lanes when, when people went, when the green <laughs> flag came back out, that's crazy. like that's, that's what it should be, right? You should be able to move up and down the racetrack. But the way that these particular speedways are, every driver is boxed into the exact same lane, and it just becomes so difficult to, to pass. These, these flat, long um, speedways just just don't produce the racing. I, I think that we need. And part of that we've talked about before. You know, shifted it into the shifting it into the night a little cooler um, can make things a little bit more exciting as well. So there there are options, but. I was really happy with the the rain and the way that it played out. I, I thought it was great, and I think we should artificially do that now. Well, years. <laughs> I mean, this is the first time that they actually completed a race in this manner. The only other time yeah. they did it was like on a road course, right? With the with the rain yeah, tires, yeah, and the, or or um, the the all star race or or yeah. something like that. Yeah, and usually the the only other times that they've used it has really just been to get the get get the race going. Um, the the finish of these races that have had any kind of wetness have been nearly completely dry by the time you get there. So it's a matter of you know when does NASCAR make the call to take them off of the the groove tires and put them on to the slicks. So this was the first time we actually finished a race on it. Uh, so I was really happy that we went on um, and they let it go. Uh, you're, we were lucky to get it in because of the light situation because that track doesn't have lights. Uh, but I really enjoyed the the way that drivers were they were using the apron all the way up to against the wall just trying to find the most grip and that made it supremely exciting and again another reason why if you're gonna have wherever you're scheduling races in the summertime where they're susceptible to thunderstorms and they don't have lights start the race earlier so you do have an opportunity to make sure that you can get them in in case anything were to happen, which I mean, they got pretty lucky. Uh, and look, I'm glad that they did have those tires because if they didn't, then Reddick's going to win the race, and he had no no right winning that race. Correct. He did yep. not have a, a winning car, <clears throat> so yep. it worked out. Okay, so that was last week, and let's uh, dive into this Nashville Super Speedway. Before we do that, let's take a look at some of the comments from last week. So, did we beat? Did we beat Barb? <laughs> I want to know if we beat beat Barb last week. <laughs> well, let's, we'll uh, we'll have to wait and see. That's that that that's that's for one of our viewers out there. So he, he knows who he is. So, a matter of fact, is that Wayne? By the way, I don't know if that was Wayne or not. Can't remember. Um, it was a great comment. Yeah. 
So we'll, we'll check that out as soon as we hear back from him. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lana, great show as usual. She likes all of our picks this week. And that's good because Christopher Bell won. Um, and he was that was an easy pick, though. Anybody could have picked Christopher Bell. Um, that was easy. Let's see. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, unfortunately, she said that uh, we'll watch practice and qualifying and listen to your Saturday show. But that never happened. Uh, let's see. And then, uh, oh, actually, there was, uh, I know Lewis actually went with Byron, which I, I, I was kind of shocked by his pick. You defended him. Uh, but, yeah, William Byron, just that's just not a track for William Byron. I, I think you can kind of, you know, put a... It is, it is not. Yeah, absolutely. And we talked about that. But given the equipment that they have and the depth of resources that they have at Hendrick, for any three of those four of those drivers to come out and win a race, Byron especially, um, especially considering how down he's been, not down, but you know, he, he started this season off winning, uh, quite a lot. Like um, last year. I wouldn't, you lost me. Like here, last year. You. Yeah. You there? Oh, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Did you lose me? No. No. Oh, all right. I thought you, I thought I heard you say you lost me, No. but um, oh, I said like last year, like last year. Yeah, exactly. Right. And you know, he's going to come back to be winning races. Um, it wouldn't surprise me for him to do it at any track. Uh, even one that he's not been historically good at. Yeah, he's been a little up and down uh, yep. recently, just like Kyle Larson. You know, they, they've they've yeah, exactly right. They've kind of been up and they've been down. Elliot, look, he's starting to be the same way now. So Hendrick, mm -hmm. a little up, a little down. You don't know when they're gonna be up or, or down. That's that's the problem. Uh, but of course, combined, they have a ton of wins. So uh, at the end of the day, that that really is what matters. Okay. So we have three races at Nashville. It's a 1.33 mile track, concrete. And this is one of those tracks where you don't really have a similar racetrack to look at. But if you want to use Dover, you can. Um, being concrete and pretty similar, uh, almost similar as far as the size of the track overall. But that's the best we can do. If you want to disregard Dover, that, that's fine. Um, but if you want to use a track, uh, they can use Dover. Would that be correct? Yep. Uh, it's a 1.3 mile trioval, like you said. So the layout is actually pretty similar to like a Las Vegas type of thing. Um, it's shorter. The concrete surface makes a, a probably a bigger difference in terms of comparison. So I think Dover is the right one to compare to, though the banking is just not anywhere near what Dover's is. I think Dover is something like 24 degrees in the corner, uh, 14 degrees here at Nashville. They are going to be using the resin on this week on the track this weekend. So all in an effort, given it's a concrete track, to make sure that rubber gets in there as quickly as possible so that they can open up more lanes. So I think as this race goes on, more of the more of the racing will happen later on because cars will start moving up the track as that rubber gets laid in. Um, so that's a, a function of kind of like how Dover works, except that the banking at Dover forces you to stay down on the inside at the inside of the corner just because it's so steep. Uh, why don't also uh, let everybody know that we're going to have a trivia question at the end of this uh, report. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, actually, the trivia question will come early. I'm going to have, um, though, a just a, I wouldn't call it a trivia question. I'm just going to call it a, you know, a, sort of like a poll question uh, that I want everybody to, uh, well, I'd, I'd like anybody to respond to. Let us know uh, what you think about the question. That'll be at the end of the show. The trivia question is going to come up in just a little bit. Um, and uh, maybe we'll make a, a, a weekly thing of this. Uh, by the way, we're going to be doing a live show sometime soon. And I th think we're, we're, we're looking towards the, the Brickyard week. So that'll give us a couple of weeks. So let us know. I think for the most part, um, I, I think uh, our viewers have said if we did the show like we're doing it now, like around 4 o'clock, uh, that that's okay. So let us know because this is the time we would like to do it. So let us know at 4 o'clock. The week of the Brickyard would be a good time. Um, we'll give it a try. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, we, we want to do it live so we can have instant impact and you know we'll be able to 
get your reactions and comments and questions as we're doing the video. Uh, even though once the video is over, like always, it's on demand, available to everybody anyway. But it just gives us a chance to intera interact with you guys as the show is going on. And because we're pretty consistent doing the shows, we you know we know even if it's a Wednesday, we know in advance, uh, we might decide to do more live shows. So uh, we'll see how that one goes. We'll give you guys enough time and opportunity to uh, get ready for that. And again, that's the week of the Brickyard. And if all goes well and we have a good response from it, then we might uh, start to do it more often. Okay, so let's get into this. Uh, there's only been three races. The starting position for all three races, CJ, has been first, fourth, and fifth. So uh, that's uh, that, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, you better qualify up front at Nashville, uh, or at least that's what we can see so far. It's only three races. I'm sure if we have 20, that'll change. But right for right now, you got to start up front. And as we said last week, when we looked ahead at the race, Chevy is the manufacturer to watch. But even though they have won all three races. Toyota's really not that far behind. Ford is the manufacturer that's got loads of issues so far at this racetrack. So uh, that is going to be the one. If you're looking at Ford drivers this week, we'll get into it. But I think just in advance, I think Ryan Blaney is the only one I'd look at uh, this week. All of the Ford drivers are out as far as I'm concerned. Um, but just taking a look at last year, Chevy, 9 of the top 13 plus the winner who led nearly 100 laps. Toyota had two of the top three, though, last year and led a combined 130. And, and, and those two led a combined 131 laps. Ford did not have a driver in the top 10. If we just take a look now at all three races, Chevy has led 457 laps. Toyota has led 430 laps, including 420 the last two years with the next gen. And Ford has led 13 laps in three races, CJ. And this year, Ford did not have a driver in the top five at Dover. So do you agree with me that if you're going to take a Ford driver, Blaney's <laughs> probably the only one you'd look at? Yeah, 100%. And uh, it, yeah, I noticed the, the trends as well that uh, Ford has struggled. Obviously, you've got the headline that Chevrolet drivers have won each of the last three races or all three races at this track, and they all start inside the top five. Uh, but I went back and looked at stage finishes as well. Since we've had the new car in the last two years, Toyota has won every single stage, but Chevy has won every single race or both <laughs> races, I should say. Wow. If you go back to 2021, it's a different car, remember? But Chevrolet swept those stages and won the race. So, uh, you know, Chevrolet's got the edge, but throughout the race, um, you know, it was, it's been Reddick, Hamlin, and Truex won two stages out of the last four, uh, whereas Elliott and Chastain won those two races. So definitely you're wanting to look at Chevrolet and Toyota, and without a doubt, you're wanting one of those cars that is starting inside the top five. And if you look at it, the, the interesting thing, though, is is that even though Toyota has led nearly the amount of laps Chevy has and stage wins and all that, when it comes down to it, the last two years with the next gen, Toyota really just had one good finishing result, and that was last year. Because even in 2022, they only had one in, in the top five. Ford had one in the top five, and Chevy had three of the top five plus the winner. So... Um, so for whatever reason, Toyota has been, like you said, leading laps, winning stages, but, you know, it's a 300-lap race and, and something's happening where they're just not able to get to 300 for whatever the reason. Yeah, but. interestingly, if you look specifically at 2022, uh, Truex won both stages and Hamlin finished second in both stages. And if you combine their laps led in that race, it was 196 of the... 300 total laps. Chase Elliott only led 42. Um, so Chevrolets have been coming on at the end, um, whereas Toyota and specifically Gibbs, uh, obviously, I guess, who else is it going to be other than 23XI? But you got, you, you did have Reddick in there last year. So, uh, but yeah, looking very strong at the start of the race, but not being able to carry it on through in the final stage. Okay. Let's pop up the odds for the race 
Oh, well, it's just a shock here. It's Kyle Larson's the favorite. Back to normal. <laughs> so Kyle Larson's the favorite. And, and of course, if you're going to have a Chevy winning all three races, Kyle Larson is going to be the favorite. And that's even though his only win was without, it was before the next gen car. So that's why I think this is an interesting race regarding, uh, I think this is one of those races where you can find some, some faults, some warts with the with the top drivers. I think there's some openings there, so I'm going to get into that and, and, and why I think there might be a way uh, to not have to go you know, head first with either one of these top three, Larson, Hamlin, and Bell. So, with Larson, again, he has the win, but that was pre-next gen when he dominated leading 264 or 300. Since then, no laps led, but he does have two top fives. But again, you're talking about four to one, overall favorite, not leading a lap in the two years with the next gen. Second at Dover this year, leading 39 laps. He's got three wins, but how about this? And I know he doesn't have back to back top 10, so this is not really, you know, uh, maybe the, the right time to say this, but just keep this in mind. Kyle Larson has not had three straight top tens this year so just keep that in mind so uh when you when you're talking about wagering on you know the top driver with the low odds he is he's just been too risky this year to do that it's just you know that's so again that's a that's a wart there for me the wart for hamlin uh being the top toyota uh is just the way he's been driving lately that's the wart for Hamlin. And I know you could say bad luck here or this and that, but whatever it is, 24th, 24th, and 38th, the last three, that's not on top of your game. So he's 5-1. to one. Other than that, I would still take Hamlin over Larson because take a look. Since the next gen, he's led over 200, what? 200, yeah, over 200 laps combined, and he finished 3rd and 6th with one pole. And he won Dover, leading 136 laps. So I would take Hamlin if I was going to take one of the two. But I, again, I'm trying to avoid those two. And I'm also going to avoid Bell. And here's why I'm going to avoid Bell. Because this is where the trivia question comes up. And since we're not live, this is the trivia question just for you, CJ. <laughs> the last driver in the Cup Series to win back-to-back -back races. Oh, interesting. Um, Blaney. No. Then who was it? He won Martinsville to get into the final, and he won at Phoenix. So who? who no, he didn't win Phoenix, remember? Oh, that's right. He won the championship. He did not win the race. That's how you got me. All right, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> Chris Buescher. Oh, yes. All right. Interesting. When he won Richmond and Michigan back-to-back -back last year. Matter of fact, he won three out of five to end the yes, regular season last year. So Chris Busch is the last driver to win back-to-back -back in the Cup Series. Point being with Christopher Bell, that's a wart. That's an issue. So, But he's the hottest driver out there right now. And he's got five straight top tens with two wins. Um, so I'm feeling real good about him being my preseason prediction to win the championship, but it's a little early. So uh, hopefully he can like just chill out and don't get don't get better than this. Just <laughs> kind of you know steady the ship. Uh, it's a long way to go, uh, but anyway, uh, he's he's looking real strong. He has three top tens here, but the problem mm -hmm. is he's only led three laps his entire career in the Cup Series at this track. And he had an accident at Daytona starting 33rd. So that's another wart along with trying to win back-to-back, -back, which I just said is not very easy. So starting with those three drivers, I'm, I'm going to pass on all three of them. I'm going to try to get away from those low odds. But if I was going to take one of them, I would probably take Hamlin. That is interesting. So all four of the top, and we didn't talk about Chastain yet, but I'm including him, all four of the top uh, favorites, I guess, and the odds happen to be the top average finishes finishers at this track. 
Um, there's only one driver that has a better average finish over these uh, three races at this track than Kyle Larson, and that is Ross Chastain. Those are the only two drivers at this track to have finished in the top five all three of those races. The only other driver among these top four to have three top tens out of the three races is Christopher Bell. And if you look at Christopher Bell, exactly like you said, is he getting too hot, I think is the question. But we know that this is a momentum kind of sport. He's got two wins in the last five races, hasn't finished lower than ninth since winning at Charlotte. Obviously, he won last week. I would, I would actually ride Bell's momentum this week because he's just been so good the last five weeks and he has been so good at this track uh he is the third uh has the third best average finish at this track out of those four and he's the only other one besides chastain and larson that has three top tens so uh, i'm okay with choosing bell um hamlin i would avoid just because the exact same reasons you said things have not been going his way once he turns it around absolutely go ahead and jump on that bandwagon because he's going to keep it going uh the the issue with larson and i i still you know i still struggle with larson because i i i totally get why he's the favorite and i don't think that when kyle larson's the the clear favorite and he's uh, he's usually like three to one two to one he's not four to one so you're still getting a little bit of a, a, a bonus there you know if you can call that a bonus with larson um but out of this bunch you know larson and chastain clearly have the best record i would feel comfortable going ahead and, and selecting bell again but like you said it is extremely hard to win back-to-back -back races um but with the momentum that he's on right now it wouldn't be a surprise well if we if we when we get through like the short numbers and get to these next four here and then keeping in mind that three of them are Chevys mm -hmm. the 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 two that I'm going to go with actually three of them I do like and that's the top three here Justin, Truex, and Elliot and this is what, again okay. why I'm I'm getting rid of the top three this week because I like the next three and I'm getting better odds so the thing with Chastain, though, is immediately when, when you looked at the odds was, wow, 7-1. That's the thing that really just sticks out. Um, Completely agree. Okay. Okay, so I had to think about, and usually I look at that, and, I, and, I, and a lot of time we've talked about that with Redick, and you know we've been right about that because Redick doesn't win usually at that spot. So I had to dig deep. And what convinced me was when I take a look at his, now here are his stats, his career stats, Ross Chastain Cup Series. Okay, now these, so I, I, this, is his, this is his best tracks. Austin, Sonoma, Phoenix, Vegas, Atlanta, Nashville. Okay, now one of the things I noticed is, now obviously Austin has been four races, four top ten, so he's always been good there. And Sonoma, pretty much the same thing, but that's a road course. Phoenix, Las Vegas, okay, and Atlanta. So the one thing I, that, I, that, that, that I bring this up is because every time it seems that Ross Chastain has a track that he's been good at, not every time, but most of the time, when Russia Saint goes somewhere where he's good at, he has a good result. Mm -hmm. Like that's he's just consistent that way. Therefore, the opposite when he goes to a track he doesn't have much going on, he rarely does anything. He's pretty predictable. So when I take so for instance, if I click Phoenix and we just take a look at his recent run at Phoenix, well there it is. Second, third, first, and sixth in the last five races. So He's good at Phoenix. It's all come lately. Let's take a look at Vegas. Lately. Third, second, fifth, fourth in the last five races. Predictable. He's good. He, he does well there. And then we could even do Atlanta. Even though it's kind of turned into a, you know, a real super speedway. But still, second, second, seventh. And this is really good, of course, for that type of racing in general. But bottom line is... Uh, you know, again, uh, if the point being, uh, especially, of course, we, we know in Nashville, he's only been there three races, second, first, fifth, and first. So why would I think he's not going to have a good race this week? 
which is why I'm willing then to, even though I'm seven to one, I'm willing to say, okay, I'll take him because these are the weeks you take Ross Chastain, and you take him when he goes to a track that he performs well at. Absolutely, 100% agree. And even if you look at where he's been trending just in recent weeks, obviously we talked about Hamlin's momentum and the up and ups and downs of uh, the Hendrick guys, but Chastain, considering you know the type of driver he is and where he is in the points and where he's been in the series he's actually had a really good stretch of five races his worst finish was 12th and that was at gateway he had only one other finish outside of the top 10 and that was iowa where he was 11th he has a 10th a fifth and an eighth in the other three races there so because of the fact that he's been great at nashville um and when he goes to tracks exactly as you pointed out where he's good at you can expect him to be good um that's why obviously his odds are where they are would i like them to be better and should they be different in any other given week yeah absolutely um but i i I still think he is a top five contender this week and then here's the other thing uh to note and that is that if you look at it uh let's just no no let's, let's click the other one let's go to laps led these are his career laps led at tracks and look who's first over so another indication that this is a good week to roll the dice on Russia chain by the way those last six you were talking about his average is 9.5 in those last six and it's been between he's finished between fifth and twelfth over those last six races you're talking about so it's the best run of a season it's his best run since the start of the season so um okay now truex and Truex, the first thing that I hit with Truex was no top fives in his last six. Well, that's not good. Mm-hmm. Seven to one. There's just something kind of missing there. But uh, when you're taking a look at it, next gen, two races, led 82 and 22, led 50 last year, finished second last year, uh, third at Dover, led 69. And if you take a look at it in his last four races, even though there's no top fives, he is trending in the right direction including getting into the top 10 last week. So I like the trending factor telling me he's now ready to maybe get into another top five. It's been a good track for him, uh, and he doesn't have a win yet. So uh, I'm looking at uh, Truex as a strong play this week as as well as Chastain. Elliott I like. The only thing is, again, like I was saying with the other guys, the other even Byron, there's just a little bit too inconsistent lately. Elliott has been strong here, first and fourth with the next gen. Um, and he has seven top fives in his last 12, fifth at Dover. So, again, I, I feel a lot more comfortable by just saying, I'll take Chastain, Truex, and Elliott instead of taking Larson, Hamlin, and Bell. Yeah, uh, the thing that impresses me most, I guess, about Martin Truex, which makes him stand out for me against, not, not against Chastain, but against... <clears throat> Elliot and Byron, uh, two-time stage winner. Um, he's not got the best average finish at this track, but he was runner-up last year. He, he's won two stages, and he's led 132 laps across the last two races at Nashville, both of those being in the current car. And like you said, he has not won yet this season. Uh, he's one in particular that knows how important that win is in, in terms of the, the playoff hunt. Um, and it's his last season, and, and he's dying to get into the playoffs. He's leading, leading the points among those who do not have that 2024, <clears throat> 2024 win yet. But, um, yeah, I think this is a good track, good weekend for Truex. Um, he has had the warts, I guess, uh, would, would just be the problems that he continues to have, which seems like almost every single week something is going wrong. You know, it started last week. Um, Uh, or in the last race in New Hampshire with the slow pit stop coming off, lost all that track position, ended up getting caught in some traffic and some issues on track. But nonetheless, the team and he persevered and actually walked away with a pretty decent finish regardless of those uh, scenarios. So I think that they're showing the, the, the tenacity and and the fight back that, that they need in order to, to get there. They just need some of the luck to go their way. And, uh, you know, Nashville, it could happen for him. He's been good here in the past 132 laps led last two. That's good enough for me. Uh, Byron Reddick Blaney. Um, I, 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 again, 
the only reason that I would even take Blaney if I was thinking of taking him is just because, once again, I said this last week, I said it two weeks ago when we picked him, he's just dialed in right now. And they were dialed in again last week. And that wasn't even a track that they've had a lot of great history at. But they were dialed in. And they could have won the race. It's possible. Without that rain delay, it's possible he wins the race. Uh, so they've got something going on right there. But he's driving a Ford. And we just talked about how Fords are just not happening here. But keep in mind he was third in 2022. Which is the best Ford finish. So... Uh, that's why I'm, you know, he's 10 to 1. That's why I'm like, all right, you know, it's not for, you might want to wait for practice and qualifying, you know, because if he qualifies well inside the top 10 or even the top 5, like if he, I mean, what's perfect is if you if you want to wait and he, you know, qualifies like 5th or 4th or even 6th or 7th, I don't care about that. That would be perfect because I don't think the odds will change much and you're still getting 10 to 1 and that, that makes you feel even better. Uh, that, you know, all right, he's looking fast. The other guys, I'm just not even going to take this week. I mean, Byron does have a sixth-place finish last year, but um, he's led five laps in his career at the track. That's not that's nothing, nothing great. Uh, didn't have a good result at Dover either. And as we just talked about, he's just been also inconsistent. And things just haven't been going his way altogether, even though he's had some shots. Uh, but that's the inconsistency. And Reddick, I don't know what Reddick's doing at 10 to 1. I just really don't. Now, the other tracks, we can say we understand why he's 7 to 1. We don't think he should be. Sort of like Chastain. Well, we're 7 to 1 Reddick this week because he has this history and da 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 da. But I, I just, where's the history? Because uh, he led 33 laps last year from the front row. Is that the history? Uh, he was 11th at Dover. He had two Xfinity Series races. He never finished in the top 14. And uh, he, okay, what? He's got four top tens and lost five races. Is that is that what we're putting him at ten to one for? What's why is he ten to one? He's ten to one because he started on the front row, won the first stage, and led 33 laps <laughs> last year. You already said it. That that's the only reason why. Um, and out of this group, I, I think the only one I would actually go with is Blaney. And the reason why I would go with him is not just on the momentum that he's been on in recent weeks, but you're absolutely right. They've got it dialed in, but he finished third in, in the first race uh, in the new generation car, the other two races he crashed out of. So we don't know what he was capable of in either of those races. He could have been great, but didn't have the opportunity to, to show anything. His average start is 9.7 out of three races at this track. Uh, we talked about how you have to start up front. It looks like he's gonna be starting inside the top 10, probably even higher. We know when he finishes, he finishes inside the top five. We know he's been on a great streak right now. So certainly out of this group, Blaney is the one you gotta go with. All right, now we go with the long, some long shots. And boy, I just find it really hard to like any long shots this week. Uh, Logano Kozlowski, you got a couple of Fords, so that's already a bad sign. The thing with Logano, and maybe this is proof of why Ford, it just doesn't connect here. Look at Logano's starting positions. Second, third, and fourth. And yet, he has led, how many, how many laps has he led? Four. So he's led four laps in three races where he started second, third, and fourth. So uh, yeah, that's that's obviously saying something's off there with the Fords. Um, but I don't see anything there. I don't see anything at Kozlowski, his best finish being 11th. Did nothing at Dover this year. Um, and then if we move on to Gibbs and Busher, uh, Gibbs, he's just not... It's just not his time right now. He only has one top five in his last 12. He's just been pretty irrelevant lately. 14th last year. Busher, Ford, I do, and never let a lap here. Best finish 18th last year, 17th at Dover. The only th good thing about Busher is, is he's got two top fives in his last three on the year, but I, I can't take any of these guys. Yeah, I think I would take Logano from a fantasy perspective because he's got a couple of top tens in there. Keselowski, his average finish is 21st. Ty Gibbs, we only have one race for him at this track to be able to see what he's done. And that was a 14th, and which is very much in line with where he's been running lately anyway. 
Chris Buescher, um best finish of 18th was last year. The other two were 30th and 36th. I kind of learned my lesson on Keselowski and Busher. It was uh, last season. It was the the string where Busher got his back-to-back -back wins and three out of um, a handful of races there, where that team was so good on concrete and rough surfaces, which is exactly what you get here. Uh, but for whatever reason, they don't have that advantage anymore. I thought they would. I thought they would at Dover, and I got bit by it. I'm not going to get bit by it again. I'm not going with either of them of that bunch. Logano, but only for a fantasy roster. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, especially since he's qualifying well there, so something works. Uh, but uh, and especially and Blaney, his teammate, has uh, also had some success. So yeah, uh, you are getting eighteen to one on a driver that really, 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 really wants to win. So mm -hmm. um, that that's the only good thing about that. All right, uh, now we got some even more ups, uh, long shots. Out of these long shots, the remaining drivers, all of them. Um, I mean, Kyle Busch is just having the hardest time. But yep. Bowman would be my obvious choice in my mind at 45 to 1. Because he's driving a Chevy, so we like that. Um, and, and, and that's all. I mean, he hasn't had any great results here. But because he's 45 to 1, uh, I'm willing to... I mean, look, if you want to throw a buck on him or something before qualifying, do that. But I'm willing to even say, hey, if he if he qualifies well, because he's never qualified inside the top ten. So if he, oh, actually, he did that once, but that was pre next gen when he qualified eighth. So, but if let's say he has a good qualifying run and he's somewhere in the top five or six, uh, then you're still going to get decent odds on him. Um, so that's why I'm I'm looking at Bowman, who was eighth at Dover, and Dover is actually one of his best tracks. He's got a win there. He's got his most top fives there. So that kind of combination of the Dover, the 45 to 1, he's having a good season, he's a Chevy, that's why he's the only long shot that I would be looking at. Yeah, I think that's a, a good choice, good sound reasoning as well. Um, Wallace, he's gotten better at this track with the new generation of car. Uh, I think he's moved into the top 15 consistently in the last two races, whereas I think he was outside the top 20 in the first one. Um, unfortunate for him, another incident last week, he's dropped out of the playoffs uh, or the playoff spots. Um, so it's going to be really hard for him to get back in. Um, but yeah, I think Bowman probably just by the fact that he's driving the Chevrolet, a Hendrick Chevrolet nonetheless, and we know that he steals wins, uh, wouldn't be surprising. And he hasn't had he hasn't had bad finishes by any stretch of the imagination. They've been top 15s. And usually if he's in that type of range, top 10, something happens, Bowman will be there to pick up the checkered flag, that's for sure. Uh, the only other drivers I wanted to note, uh, Josh Berry at 55 to 1, just because of the fact that he has four top 10s in his last six. So they, they've found something there. He's got a couple top fives, third last week. And he does have two top fives in three Xfinity Series races at this track, but he's driving a Ford. Uh, but still, the way he's going, I thought uh, we'd mention him. Uh, I also wanted to mention Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And I wanted to mention him because he's been in uh, three cup races here. He does have one top 10. And uh, in his last two Xfinity Series races, a long time ago, he finished fifth and second. Um, but more importantly, in his last two races this year, believe it or not, he's got back-to-back -to -back top 10s. Finished 7th and 5th. And I think he's, what, 400 to 1. I don't expect him to win. But, hey, if you want to put him in some sort of top 10 finishes, maybe you get good odds on him, fantasy, all that. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. may not be the worst idea. So uh, that's why I wanted to point him out. And then my trivia question. Okay? So, um... No, no, not the trivia question, but the question to the audience. That, that Sort of like a poll question. And by the way, when we do the live show, we're going to incorporate a poll. So I think that will be cool. Uh, and we can have that on the show. But the question is, again, I want your, I want everybody, all the viewers, to give, give us your answer here. What you think? Uh, when you look at the front row drivers, McDowell and Gilliland, do you think either driver will get a win this year? So let us know what you think. Will McDowell or Gilliland get a win this year? They're both about, what, 100 and 250 to 1 this week. And keep in mind, uh, Gilliland, in his last three races, has finished 12th, 12th, and 10th. 
And in his first nine races this year, his average finish was 24th. In his last nine races, his average finish is 15th. And he had one truck race here back in 2021, and he was runner-up. So, now look, I don't expect him to do much here. They're both driving Fords. But on the rest of the season, and I don't care where it is, obviously. It could be Daytona, Talladega, whatever. But do you think McDowell or Gilliland will get a win? And what do you think about the job that Front Row Motorsports has done this season, uh, uh, CJ? I think it's been very good. They haven't uh, had the headlines by getting into victory lane quite yet, but they've been really consistent. It's It'll be interesting. Yeah, I thought it was interesting when McDowell, um, his announcement for the future came out, is not going to be with that team. But then, like you said, Gilliland really has stepped up. Uh, in recent weeks. I've been really impressed by him. Last week was a, another example of him running among the top 10 for, for a lot, a good portion of the race. Uh, they've definitely got their program heading in the right direction. They just need uh, those extra couple little bits and pieces to, to take that step forward and score consistently um, inside the top 10 or, or maybe grab some more top 10s, put it that way. Um, I won't jinx the poll by, by saying what I think, though. Uh, okay. I want to see what I want to see what the viewers say first, and then I'll let you know what my answer would have been next week. What, what kind of a driver do you think Gilliland is? What kind of a, a future does he have, if any? I can't say that because then people are going to know what I think. Oh, okay. Uh, is going right. to say. <laughs> so there you go. I think I think Gilliland. Um, I think he's got a lot of potential. He's very young. There's been a number of occasions over the past year where he has impressed. I think he just needs the right coaching, the right backing, and the right calls made for him on the pit box. And I think he can be a, a pretty good competitive driver pretty much every week. All right. Time to uh, make picks. So uh, who are you going to go with this uh, this week? Uh, give, us, uh, give us your top three, if you have it. Uh, my top two choices are going to be Larson and Chastain. Okay. Um, let's see. I'll go. I'll go. Um, I'll go Bowman. Actually, I'll go way down for the long shot. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think there's many other choices to tell you the truth. So, I think Bowman's uh, as good as a long shot option as you're going to get. I'm going to go with Chastain, Elliott, and Truex. Uh, Blaney would be like my fourth. He'll be the wild card. Uh, we'll see what happens there, but it's just hard to take a Ford at this track with the history. Uh, so, uh, you know, and since he is my favorite driver, I don't want to that cloud in anything. All right, so uh, that is going to be it for NASCAR. And what do we have next week? We're out of this. Uh, that's the Chicago Street Race, right? Next week we go to Chicago. Exactly right. And then we've got Pocono and Brickyard. And then they take a two-week vacation. Correct. So, For the Olympics. Yep. So there you go. So uh, it's a Chicago street race next week. And uh, that was a crazy deal last year. So we'll see if, uh, if it gets any more crazier this week. They had uh, rain last year, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. That goes to show you we need to be wetting down all the tracks yeah. whenever we <laughs> all right okay so that's our nascar coverage 